Thank you again uh, for the opportunity to tell you about joint work with my co-authors Daniel Genkin, Lev Pachmanov, and Yuvan Yorom about cache attacks. So cache attacks are a very uh, powerful cryptanalytic technique exploiting contention for low-level hardware resources, particularly the code and data caches of modern CPU. It's essentially oblivious to process confinement and virtualization mechanism, and um, it has been shown to be a devastating way to extract keys across process and virtual machine boundaries. However, because it exploits low-level effects, attacks use low-level code to access the low-level resources, and this requires native code execution. Now, how would an attacker get to run their native code on the same platform as a victim? Well, if you look at the prior literature, it makes perfect sense in cloud setting, uh, a virtual, a virtualization, multi-tenancy, multi-user servers, and so on. But what about the typical end-user platforms? A single user on their own simple device. Um, they used to just download random crap from the internet and run it, but nowadays users are finally getting reluctant to uh, install arbitrary native applications, um, and they are discouraged to do so actively by the operating systems. Uh, and increasingly, application codes run within browsers, so within web pages or browser plugins where they are sandboxed, subject to the same origin policy, and crucially, run as interpreted code like JavaScript. Moreover, we are seeing increasing popularity of lockdown platforms that just run a web browser. Things like uh, Chromebook running Chrome OS claim to be uh, the safest computer one can buy. So are cache attacks pertinent to such end user settings? And we show a resounding yes. Uh, here's a typical scenario. The user is running Chrome on their Chromebook uh, and, and opening Gmail in their web browser, and then they're using uh, a web-based uh, implementation of OpenPGP called end-to-end, -end, developed by Google, to decrypt their secret emails. So far, so good. In the background, there is some tab uh, on some dubious pirate movie website that displays an advertisement that we put in that ad service, which runs some code that probes the cache and extracts the secret key from this open PGP instance running, running in that other tab, leading to full key extraction. So we have uh, this very convenient deployment vector of a malicious website or a, a, a pop under, under advertisement or any other way to uh, run code in the user's browser. Um, it doesn't exploit any vulnerability, any bug. Everything is si still subject to confinement, but the cache attacks still work. We implement these attacks using portable native code uh, supported by Chrome. You can think about it as a particularly efficient version of JavaScript, and actually it's being standardized now into a replacement called SM.js or WebAssembly that has essentially the same properties. In order to run the cache attack from such portable code, there are many challenges to be surmounted, including um, the browser's memory mapping, the ever-changing dynamic allocation and garbage collection, accurate timing sources, the lack of flash instructions, and uh, the overhead of running non-native code. We have surmounted all of these and successfully attacked uh, several implementations, uh, including full key extraction from uh, Google's end-to-end -end implementation of OpenPGP. Uh, OpenPGP JS, another implementation in JavaScript, and um, the Curve 25519 implementation of a library called Elliptic, which is particularly interesting because it uses this well designed curve, and its implementation is supposedly a constant time Montgomery ladder implementation, and yet it is vulnerable because somewhere in the translation from their high level JavaScript code to the machine code, something gets optimized away, and we can detect that in the code cache. Uh, this, is, uh, this applies to the Chromebook lockdown platform as well as other platforms running Chrome. And uh, as we see, cache-based key extraction attacks are possible on end-user devices, including the latest and greatest ones, uh, including lockdown platforms, and uh, they're doable by and on non-native code. You can read all about it in our paper. Thank you.